We're so glad you could join us today. We have a few announcements before we start the service. For missions and outreach. This afternoon in Rochester. Uh, Family Hope Center, we're still collecting the baby bottles. So if Julie still getting some, you can give them to her. And from Honduras, uh, they sent us pictures of a well dedication ceremony that they did this week. So they dedicated a well for fresh water. So thanks for supporting missions and outreach. And we'll Stand to join us for praise and worship.
I want to thank Delivering Word, uh, part of their choir, helping us these weeks, and it's been a real blessing, so thank you very much. Amen. This time we'll have Pastor Deb with the scripture out of Revelation chapter 12. Morning. Revelation 12, verses 7 through 11, the New King NIV translation. Then war broke out in heaven. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon, and the dragon and his angels fought back. But he was not strong enough, and they lost their place in heaven. The great dragon was hurled down, that ancient serpent called the devil, or Satan, who leads the whole world astray. He was hurled to the earth, and his angels with him. Then I heard a loud voice in heaven say, Now have come the salvation and the power and the kingdom of our God and the authority of his Messiah. For the accusers of our brothers and sisters, who accuses them before our God day and night, has been hurled down. They triumphed over him by the blood of the Lamb, and by the word of their testimony, they did not love their lives so much as to shrink from death. I also want to thank Slick for playing the guitar. We'll have him periodically. Amen. All right. I'd like to read this from uh, Bishop Harry Grimling's uh, wife uh, because he passed away and had the funeral and then the dinner for that funeral here. Uh, to the pastor and first lady and congregation, thank you for your condolence, your love, your prayers, and support in behalf of the Grimling family. We greatly appreciate all that you have done. God bless you all. Much love from Mother Grimling. And that's a church that uh, we've worked together, uh, helped each other. Uh, they're a blessing, and uh, losing Pastor or Bishop Grambling was a great loss to this community, uh, but the church will keep their ministry uh, right on, on line. At this time, uh, we're going to have two testimonies from the Melchizedek's, and then right after church, we're riding up to the uh, Hells Angels bike blessing in Rochester. Uh, so I uh, want to appreciate, have everyone appreciate, uh, the, as they speak, you listen to what God has done uh, in their lives. So first of all, there'll be Wayne and then Ethan. Let's see. Morning, uh, sisters and brothers. I thank you for uh, the opportunity today, and I'm sorry I move around a lot when I talk up here. I, I, know that. I, I hope it's not distracting. And I know I'm doing a testimony, but I do have a question for you. Uh, and women, I'm not picking on you. You have a habit of doing it. My question is, do you believe or do you believe believe? Women do that. My wife particularly does that to me all the time. She says, oh, I was out shopping. I saw this, and I love it. I said, did you buy it? No, because I don't love it, love it. And I'm really confused by what that meant. But the question, do you believe or do you believe, believe? As a child, I was brought up somewhat in the Catholic Church. My father was an altar boy, had to know Mass in Latin. And even as a small child, if you said to me, who is God? God is the creator of everything. The universe, the planet, every man, woman, child, every animal. Who is Jesus? Jesus was born to a virgin mother. Jesus walked this planet, lived the perfect, sinless life, was falsely accused, executed on the cross, and his blood covers our sins. I believe that in my head. As time went on, 
Oddly enough, I am from the Albany area. And we do have the two rivers that come together in Albany, the Mohawk and the Hudson, two major rivers. But when you live up on the hill away from the river, you don't have a lot of water. There was this place by my school, oddly enough, it was called Pirate's Island. And I find it odd because there was no water. There was no cool boats. I, I didn't understand why it was called Pirate's Island. But what was there was drugs, alcohol, loose women, and fights. And I found that I liked all of that that was at Pirate's Island. And a good day was if you hit the triple, got all three. That was a good day. I was a teenage father, late teens. I had uh, I graduated high school when I was 18. And in April of the following year, my son was born. In June that year, his mother graduated high school, and in July, she turned eight. I had moved away from God. I never realized the blessing I had. I thought it was more of a curse. And since I moved away from God, like we talked about in Sunday school, who do you hang out with? Who's your influence? I believed in my head who God was. I believed in my head who Jesus was. But I started hanging out way more with the devil and people that were influenced by the devil. I started my own business where I had to run down to New York City and transport illegal substances back to the Albany area. And uh, like I said, I believed in God. So anytime the New York State police pulled up behind me, when I was transporting illegal substances from New York City, you want to hear this cat pray. Boy, I called on God at that moment. And you know what? God, if you get me home and just let me unload this, I'll never ever do it again. And that lasted for about a week. And I, all I could think of is when, when I used to do that, now looking back at it, is I remember when my kids were little and they would stand looking up at me and it's like, Dad, I'm sorry and I'm never going to do it again. And I'm like, mm, yeah, okay. Yes, you are. Yes, you are. I know you are, but I, I, I accept your apology right now. I did a lot of, you know, bad things because my influence came from Satan. My marriage was not very good. I was in and out of the house. My children saw that. Um, I wasn't a role model. I was a drunk. I was a druggie. Uh, I had a desire to be with other women. But I believed in God. My marriage ended. And I thought, here we go. Now it's time to just to pull the ripcord. I'm jumping out of the plane. I'm off. God had a different plan. God threw me a curveball and put a woman in my life. And uh, at this point, I was probably thinking, yeah, that's about the last thing I need. But, you know, again, I believed in God, and I always knew that God had a plan, even though I wouldn't listen. This woman came into my life, and you know what? It was a fairy tale. It really was. It was everything that Walt Disney could ever write. Things were perfect. I wasn't doing drugs anymore. I didn't want to be with other women. 
Things were incredible. Until they weren't. Until they weren't. Life goes on. That hot fire, that passion fire kind of burns out. Fire's still going, but it's not as hot. That was all gone. I don't know where where regular life comes in. And you know what? I started reverting back. I did, because that's what I knew. That's who I hung out with. That was my influence for 30 plus years. Was giving in to the desires of my flesh and giving in to the devil. We started going to church, though. Found it wonderful, I, and I we still attend it today. It is paramount that you have one. It is paramount because it is something you can always go back to to show what you were like, what happened when you met Jesus, and what you were like today as a result of it. Brothers and sisters, we all have an incurable disease of death. One of, one of us will die. One of, one of us will face our Lord and Savior. And it will be a lot sooner than any of us expect. The Bible tells us that. But the Bible also tells us that there is tremendous freedom found in Christ. If you do not feel free, if you are not living a free and victorious life, if you are not excited about Jesus and excited about watching lives pass from death to life, you need to wake up. We have the most exciting job in the world as Christians. There is no paying job that gives you this type of a rush when you get to see a sinner repent Ass from death to life. When you see a soul that is dead, eyes black as night, suddenly revive. Suddenly revive. Only Jesus Christ can do that, brothers and sisters. Only Jesus Christ can do that. It ain't about me anymore. It's about him. Hallelujah. There's a living Savior. Amen. I'm going to pray us out of here. That's all I got. Thank you, Father. Thank you for this congregation. Thank you for these men and women, Lord. I pray you light these people on fire, Father. We are in a world full of people going to hell and they need people to point the way to you their blood is on our heads father this generation is is on our heads and i pray that we would we would rise up we pray for revival but lord a revival has to start right within me i need to be revived before i can revive anyone else and you have revived me and i thank you for the revival that is in each and every born again believer and i pray father that that one person sitting here today that may be idle and sharing your faith lord that they would say you know what I got the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords in me, and there is nothing to fear but God. Thank you for this day. We give you praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Are these guys real? Amen. I enjoy watching them. <laughs> I. They have a ministry that I didn't even, I just scratched the surface. And to watch them, it, it, it's like uh, two hounds on leashes. <laughs> you know, I'm going to go up and release them uh, and watch them work. They love God, and they're not embarrassed over God. They're, they'll share God all afternoon. So keep us all in prayer as we ride up to the bike blessing. Let's stand for our final prayer. Lord God, we do lift all of our lives to you and say, here we are. Use us, Lord Jesus. Let us die to self and live into Christ. Let us take the word of God today to Rochester. Let us find favor with the Holy Spirit to those that are listening to sow seeds, but also to reap the harvest. Father, in everyone's life here today, show us Jesus and let us lift up Jesus Christ more and more in our lives. In your holy name, amen. a stranger and you
you invited me in. I was sick. And you looked after me. I needed a teacher. And you inspired me. I was lost. And you prayed for me. I was addicted. And you helped me break free. I needed a mentor. And you were there for me. I felt alone. And you showed me true community. You helped me experience the joy of worship. You made me feel welcome and safe. You gave me the strength to keep going. You led me to Jesus. 